Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Strong. I'm the co-director here at Racing Magpie in Mini Luzaha in Rapid City, South Dakota. On behalf of our whole team and, and uh, just getting started here, uh, while our, our host, our normal host, Tally Monto, is uh, uh, sliding in to, to her computer to, to join us too, uh, I want to welcome all of you to an exciting presentation that's part of our seasonal program called Winter Camp. And tonight we're here with Daryl and Mary Zephyr presenting their talk called The Spirit of Singing and Songs. We're, we're really privileged and grateful to have them both here with us tonight to share with all of you. Um, just to give you a little background on Racing Magpie, in case you don't know, we're a Lakota-centric arts and cultural organization founded in 2015. Uh, and we do our best to center the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does in all of our work. Um, our work is focused on elevating and amplifying the ongoing work of Lakota <laughs> artists and culture bearers and their communities. Um, as part of that being a good relative, this program, the winter camp program, uh, is trying to reimagine the, the winter camp model of problem solving and community building um, in today's world um, by examining the deeper cultural roots about the way Lakota people do things, how they interact with the universe, how is community built and strengthened. Um, while these events are open to the public and we're happy to have folks here, um, they're always going to center around Lakota community members as both presenters and attendees. Um, as plants and trees focus their energy on building strength, and growing from the roots during the winter. Uh, our hope is that the community will join together to strengthen and grow together each year through uh, sharing and learning. We also wanna thank the South Dakota Arts Council for their generous support of this program this year. Um, we always get asked, how do you support Racing Magpie and how do you support the artists that we work with and support? One way is to make a donation to Racing Magpie to our 501c3 nonprofit through our website or mailing it in or coming through the space here in Rapid That's City. So the other is to support native artists and makers and creatives oh, directly. We encourage you to do that. 11. Find, search them out, um, find, them, find them on um, the internet, purchase their art, download their music, buy their CD, buy yourself, buy yourself a gift, buy your friends and family gifts and really find ways to appreciate their art by supporting them directly. Um, just some quick housekeeping. If you have any questions along the way, if you're in the Zoom meeting with us, just raise your hand or type a question in the chat and I'll share it with, with Daryl and Mary. Uh, if, you're follow, if you're watching on Facebook uh, live stream, just type your, your question in and we'll make sure that that gets to them and they can answer as they have a chance. Um, be comfortable, enjoy this, um, and and join me in welcoming Daryl and Mary to the um, presentation. And um, let me get them on screen here. And I I think you yep there you are. I'm going to hand it over to you now. So thank you so much for coming and take it away. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, just want to say welcome to everybody who's joining the live. And um, it was, uh, first of all, my name is Daryl Zephyr. I'm from uh, Bad Nation, South Dakota, little uh, community in South Central South Dakota. And uh, I lived there um, all my life, 44 years. And uh, uh, my <clears throat> father and mother are, are Clark and Pauline Zephyr, and um, I have a um, twin brother as well, Gerald Zephyr, and then uh, um, finally met uh, um, my wife, Mary, and uh, together we have uh, three, uh, three babies, Daryl Jr. and Daxton 
Jackson Everett and Kongshi Rose. And uh, we all live out in Bad Nation. But right now we're up in Alberta. We're uh, visiting the, the in-laws up here and having a good visit so far. So, um, but yeah, this is my wife, Mary. And let say a few words. Hello, everyone. <laughs> As Daryl uh, said, my name is Mary Brown Zephyr. Uh, here in my parents' home here in Pigeon Lake, Alberta. This is where I grew up and was raised until I was 19 when I met Daryl and moved to Fort Thompson. It's almost over 17 years now. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> we went, I went to my first hockey game last night. No, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. But um, I guess kind of was uh, anticipating some questions, but um, <laughs> we weren't really sure what um, what this was going to uh, what was going to happen here. We thought we were going to get interviewed about something, but I guess the uh, the presentation is about singing and songs. And I think Tally had wanted us to talk about um, how we started singing. So I'll let Daryl start first. Okay. Well, um, I can remember uh, back when I was a, a little boy, I remember um, growing up in my home and uh, my mother and father were, um, they were um, singers, the both of them were singers. And uh, the first uh, music that I hear, I can remember them singing was uh, the, the Dakota hymns. And I remember they used to be, uh, there used to be about 15, 20 of them from all from Fort Thompson. I think a lot of them are gone now, passed on to the, spirit world but um i remember they used to go to home to home and they used to sing these songs all in dakota but they were hymns because i know they were they were church people back then christianity was a big part of our uh, our community and everybody then was uh you know, they went to church and they prayed that way and they sang that way um <clears throat> so i can remember that i can remember the the songs and as I got older we started to me and my twin brother we started to learn them and uh but that's the first uh memory I have of uh, my parents singing and um I remember uh one point in my life uh I remember my father coming into the house and he would uh go to the bathroom and he'd come out of the bathroom and he'd have a towel wrapped around his uh, his neck. And he'd go out the door. And I noticed him doing that a few, a few times. And one time I asked him, I said, Dad, what, what are you doing? Where are you going? So I'm going to sweat, son. <clears throat> I said, oh, okay, can I come? And I didn't know what a sweat was, but he said, yeah. He probably didn't think I was going to follow him. He just said, yeah. And uh, so he left. He left without me, but I... I went outside, I went to the the bath, the restroom, and I grabbed a towel and I put it over my neck like how he did. And uh, I started to leave and my mom asked, where are you going, son? So I'm gonna go to sweat with uh, with dad. So I went out the door and sure enough, he was over at the sweat lodge and just him. And so we went there and went into the sweat lodge and my dad's start singing songs. I think I went right to sleep that very first sweat. Um, and from then on, I started going to the sweat lodge and I started learning those songs. Those are actually the first songs I learned was the sweat lodge songs. And then back in 1986, 85, um, my grandmother, well, actually my uncle went to a powwow in Lord Brew and um, Sunday morning, the, uh, the power was over. And Monday morning, actually, he got up and he was going to go out and 
get in his truck and go to work. And he noticed there was a, a powwow drum, a bass drum in the back of his truck. And uh, somebody from the powwow, they mistakenly put that drum in the back of his truck. And uh, so he took it and he painted it and he, uh, he gave it to my grandmother, or that was his mom and my dad's mom. We called her grandma Buck. Her last name was Buck, Mary and Buck. And uh, so she had it and she gave it to my father and my dad. And she said, uh, teach your boys, teach your boys how to sing. Uh, he said, okay. And he, uh, he took that drum and he put it in the basement. And I remember playing in the basement and uh, I would see that drum sitting in the corner there. And I, I would ask, ask dad, and we'd, me and Gerald would ask dad, you know, who's, who's drum dad? I said, that's yours. But it sat there for about a year or two maybe. And he finally, one, one, one day after uh, supper, we got done eating supper and he went downstairs and he brought that drum up. And he, we live out in the country, Bad Nation. And uh, he took it outside and outside there's a little uh, cement area where we parked there with a vehicle. And, and he backed the truck up and he put, put that drum down. He said, you guys, uh, um, uh, grandma wants, to, wants you guys to learn how, you boys to learn how to sing. <clears throat> And so he sat down and my dad wasn't really a powwow singer, but he did, he taught what he, what he could, he, what he knew. He taught us the flag song. And I think it was the, um, a victory song is what, what we learned first. And we used to sing those songs outside after supper. And uh, all of a sudden you can hear, hear the, the coyote. The coyote will start to howl on the, in the hills there across the creek. <clears throat> and so, uh, we started uh, singing those songs and it come time, my dad wanted to do a, uh, um, a little powwow or ceremony initiation and to uh, bring us into the circle, me and my brother and uh, uh, let the people know that, you know, we were gonna be singers. And so he did that, he called a, he called a, he called a man, an elderly man to come and help. And we did, uh, we had a powwow there at the el elementary, school gym there in Fort Thompson and we did did that uh ceremony and my dad told him about what was happening he said there time we'd sing in the evening those coyotes would come and they would come help us so when he did the naming ceremony it was supposed to be Shugumani Tuoka which was a coyote drum and when he did the ceremony he put ska at the end of Shugumani Tu and so we became known as a Shugumani Tu Ska singer, just me, my brother G and my dad. Eventually we picked up uh, one of the adopted brothers, uh, uh, late uh, Doug, Doug Grell, and uh, he come and help. And then eventually uh, Lala Wayne Tuhawks was a big help. He was one of the, one of the, um, at the time he was one of the, uh, one of the best singers in the powwow circle really sing, he sang really high. So he taught us his style and uh, come to, oh, uh, my dad, he, my dad said we were related, we were related to him. He was our grand, grandfather, our grandpa on, on the hair. Cause he took, uh, they, he took uh, my grandma as, as his sister. And so we called him uh, Lala Wayne. We called him Lala and uh, but he, yeah, he made songs for us and he, he uh, taught us many more songs and uh, from there I was back in 1988 one day we ended up uh, ended up our very first host drum gig I think I was in 98 we ended up getting invited out to Bellingham Washington we had an adopted brother and sister out there and uh, on a poster we still have the poster it says show money to ska host drum but on the way out there we started to talk, me and G and uh, Brother Doug, and we said we're going to a different reservation. You know, they're not they're not Dakota. They're not going to be able to say Shugumani to Ska. We should we should uh, wonder if we should go by a different name. And from on that trip out there, I don't know, it must have been in Montana or somewhere. That was a long trip, man. Anyways, we decided maybe we should go by maybe like an English name. Maybe we'll try a Fort Thompson. But we thought about it. There was already a Fort Thompson drum group, and we didn't want to 
uh, step on any toes or, you know, disrespect anybody. So, and we thought about, well, we live in bad nation. We're a bad nation. Yeah, let's go bad, bad nation. So I was in 1998 and that was the very first time we set up bad nation. And from then on, we were known as, uh, as bad nation singers. And um, that's just a little bit of, uh, I think I forgot a few things, but that's a little bit of how, how I started to sing. And uh, I think that's all. I'll turn it over to Mary, share her story. Um, so sort of uh, just like Daryl started, um, my <clears throat> first uh, singing that I can remember was um, in Sweat. And it come from my grandma. My grandma was a really, really beautiful singer and she loved to sing. And I remember when we were young, we would all like my family, my, my brothers and sisters, all my cousins, when we would all go to sweat, my grandma would always tell us, you know, sing loud, sing loud, you girls, sing loud. That's all I can remember. I can still hear her voice saying that to us, you know, and when we'd be in ceremony there. And if you knew my grandma when she was living, anytime you would go to visit her, you know, I'd go visit her almost every day when I was young. And she would always be singing. That's something that she was so passionate about. And she was just, like I said, she was a beautiful singer. Like I really looked up to her and I always wanted to sing just like her. And um, so that that love that I have for singing still to this day, I, I credit to her because of how she encouraged us from the time we were little, you know, sing girls, sing loud. And no matter where we were, if it was a, in sweat or at um, powwows or round dance or, we have other ceremonies in our in our Cree uh, culture here, and um, no matter where we were, that's what she was saying. You know, sing, sing, you girls. It would be like me and my cousins, or sometimes just myself or my sister. You know, it didn't matter who, but that's something that she instilled in us. Just a really, just really lo a love for singing. Um, so, Mary, so I grew I up a... with that, and um, I was somebody going to say something. Sound like it? Tell can, you there. Can you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I was. Oh, I are. didn't mean to interrupt. I thought you were. Um, uh, yeah, you were I done, there. but I. <laughs> I just rolled in, signed in late. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much for for being patient. But so, yeah. like, both of you grew up singing. Did you ever? have a lack of confidence and then you're singing like what brought you to the point where you were confident enough to yeah. tune out the outside world and realize that this not only is um a responsibility to our people but it's your way of life too and everything that you do so can you kind of were you young when you figured that out yeah or are you still figuring it out I was, you, I was, what, I was about to um, talk confidence. a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, uh, my, my parents, my, my dad and my mom, and like I said, my grandma, my grandpa, they were all part of a drum group called Pigeon Lake Singers back in the nineties, early nineties. And until like the mid nineties, they stopped. Uh, going to powwows and stop singing as much and so I, I can't remember exactly how old I was but up until that point we would always be at powwows and after that after they stopped going to powwows so, as much as I come into like a young preteen into my teenage years um, I, I stopped singing as much and I so when I was getting with Daryl around, like I said, 19, I think, I was just starting to sing again. And when we actually met was in Fort Hall, Idaho in 2000, 
2005. Yeah. And that was one of my, you know, just now coming back and a part of me coming back into that, um, getting into that love for singing was um, my, my sister, Martha Deschamps, Mamas, we call her. Um, she was the one encouraging me after that point um, to start singing again and to get into it more. <laughs> So I give her credit for that because uh, I don't know if I would have picked it up again after if it wasn't for her. But um, she at the time was singing with Northern Cree singers and that's who we went to Fort Hall, Idaho with. They were having a women's backup singing contest, which at that time they weren't really common. So we drove all the way from here to Fort Hall just to go to that. Uh, contest and that's where we I ended up meeting Daryl and so it it took a lot for me to get out of my shell again and even after I started singing with them <coughs> I I had a lot of moments where I didn't feel so confident but I always just tried my best <laughs> and now I feel I feel pretty good about where we're at where I'm at as far as my singing, but I still have moments too where and I know what I and I don't feel confident. <laughs> and for those who have not heard Mary sing, you'll you'll <laughs> usually find her um uh, on the powwow trail too and and she has a beautiful voice. Both of you guys do, but you know <laughs> thank Mary's you. Thank you. Very, very Mary's and then we just have a few comments <laughs> a, a comment from the um audience here and they said good to see you mary um they met you through stick game hand game so they know you from that mm -hmm. aspect oh, cool. too it was um orlando avery yeah. and then trisha withhorn put that pigeon lake was one of her faves back in the day yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah maybe even talk a little you know because singing when we think of art, you know, those of us who are in visual arts, there's painting, there's different mediums, but when you sing, you know, mm -hmm. there's also different occasions or ceremonies, you know, just, and there's different, you guys know the songs to those occasions too, like the, mm -hmm. to, the appropriateness and protocol, you know, because you're not going to sing a powwow song at a hand game song so mm -hmm. can you kind of talk a little bit more about the differences between those songs and why you like the differences oh yeah <laughs> okay i'll let you talk first. okay <laughs> <clears throat> so um well the one memory comes to uh, comes to mind i remember i think it was lord rule powwow back when we first started back in the 80s well, maybe 89. Um, so at that time, we didn't know very many songs. And uh, a family had uh, had came to a, our drum and gave us tobacco. And they said, uh, can you sing an honor song for this, this one of their relatives? <clears throat> and so um, we were going over the song. We didn't know, like, we didn't know many songs, um, but we... To our understanding, this was a honor song. You know, we put his his uh, Lakota name into the song, and we sang the song. And um, after it was over, the family was getting ready in front of the MC stand, and his old man came over. His old singer. He was actually the one that did the ceremony for us, and he had this uh, tobacco in his hand, and he put it on our drum. Um, you know, he could have really like scolded us and got after us and made us feel bad and discouraged us. But he said, um, now I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something like, um, uh, just wanted to let you, you boys know you guys are young singers and, um, you know, you're just now starting out. He said, that's good. Keep going. He said, but uh, you have to, you have to learn a little bit more. You're going to be learning throughout the rest of your life. and. Uh, he said, um, you're going to make mistakes. He said, you made one today, he said. And the mistake that you made was uh, you you sang a memorial song and this man is still living, he said. So he said, no, go home and learn as many songs as you can. Ask people, you know, and 
you know, learn the language, learn the language. And, and so, you know, what you're singing, what you're saying. And, um, and now we really felt bad, you know, so we went and they gave us a donation, but I think we gave it back to the family because it was our mistake and, you know, uh, like that. But, um, that was one, one uh, memory that came, came to, but, um, there are different songs that, you know, belong in the powwow circle, in the, um, in the sweat lodge, the sun dance, you know, those, are, those songs belong at no circles. And, um, you know, we do make mistakes still, you know, as, as singers, you know, and uh, we've been, I think we're gonna make mistakes for the rest of our lives, you know. <laughs> we're not gonna know, know everything, but we do our best, me and my brother. I remember this one time, one more story. I remember this one time, this, uh, it's actually his birthday today. I want to say uh, happy heavenly birthday to Alala, Steve Chargenigo. But I remember back in 88 or 89, we went out to Black Hills Powwow. And I remember that he went around to all the drums and he, he was asking all of them if they knew a certain song. And he finally came to us and he probably knew we didn't know it, but he, he asked us anyways. And he showed us that song. He said, you get it. And I remember hearing that song then, but I didn't know it. it had a whole bunch of Lakota words in it. So we told him no. And nobody in that in that at the power knew it at the time. And uh and so after that, my brother, my brother G, he really uh he took to that and he really like he's like, we, we need to learn these songs. So he started to learn all those older songs. And uh, that was kind of one of our goals was to learn as many uh old school songs as possible. So we didn't want that to happen again. If, if somebody came to us and asked us to sing a song, um, we were we were gonna do our best to try to know it if that time came again. So I just wanted to share that, you know, and that's that was an experience there that, I, that came to mind, a couple of them. Um, I can remember which one's that but um, Importance of songs. Yeah. yeah. The um the kind of songs like I said I started when I was a young girl in sweat singing. So I know, you know, those sweat songs were probably the first ones that I knew of. And um also wanted to say hi to Lando. He mentioned hand games. So my mom and my grandma, they all they used to all get together around here in our area and have hand games all the time. I remember that when I was young, like we would always go somewhere and play hand games. And so that was a big part of my, my upbringing too, because uh, I can remember, you know, being young and always wanting to play and, and still hearing, you know, some of those songs too. So I really enjoy singing hand game songs. And if you know my mom, my mom, sing would I mean she sings hand game songs all the time I think that's like her her love is singing hand game songs and playing hand games but um and then like I said we have different ceremonies here on our on our res that they're called like giveaway songs just all kinds because like I said my grandma she really loved to sing and she knew all kinds of songs like even songs and I, I think one was like a in Japanese <laughs> and German and like uh hymns, Cree hymns and just like uh hymns in general from the I think I'm not sure which church, but I know she was she went to church at some point in her life and sang gospel songs. So for me, it was, it's all it's always been all kinds of singing. <laughs> and I can remember being really young <coughs> and uh, like a little girl. And I was always, uh, I really idolized Whitney Houston. <laughs> I wanted to sing like her. Me too. And, <laughs> and uh, like I had a, a tape of, uh, I can't remember what that, what the tape was, but it was Whitney Houston's album at the time and it was really popular and that's what I listened to all the time and I would want to sing just like her so for Probably, me it's, um, it's been all all of that so so I have a, um if I'm lagging I'm sorry I'm 
in the middle of nowhere, my mom's ranch is in surrounded by mountains over on this side are the little Rockies on her south view. And then on the west view are the bear's paw. I got stuck oh, in her wow. driveway because it snowed and stuff. Up. I had good weather all the way until just right outside Hayes here. And then I pull into her <laughs> ranch and got my van, grabbed my laptop and ran in to sign up. Um, so Daryl, well, even Mary, but I know Daryl um, with the Bad Nation Singers. Um, for those of you who also don't know, Daryl is my she che she um, on our mother's sides. Uh, my grandmother and his mother are um, cousins through the Shoots the Enemy side there. But um, when we talk about spirit of song, before it gets to the point where Bad Nation sings, can you talk to the audience a little about little bit about um the process of writing songs because it's not like the outside world the way music is composed you know our ways are different like you know the oh. title of this presentation was spirit of songs so that's how um what i would like you to talk a little bit about how what the process is when you think of a song and then um writing the song because you guys aren't writing it in English either, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you want to just kind of talk to the audience a little bit. About... Are you still okay? <laughs> the yeah. light went over. Yeah, okay. Oh, we could, as long as we can hear you, we're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you hear my question? I believe so. Okay. Um, Like how, how to compose a song, right? Yeah, like because yeah. you know those uh, those viewers or audience members who aren't um, of Ocheti Shakawi or even indigenous languages and stuff are it, it's not it's a very different process. You know there is a spirit with that song, and that's how it is composed. And you keep that in mind. So kind of talk about that process. Okay. Well, for me, um, I don't really consider myself a uh, a real one of the best song composers you know but uh, i do my best because it actually it happens more than you think that somebody asked to um ask me to make a song and it just happened last night two nights ago on uh, facebook one of the brothers messaged me and he asked me to make a song for his sister and I'll, I'll leave it leave it at that that's that's it was some other circumstances but that's where that's that's what it basically was about to encourage his sister to uh and so i for me here's how i did it i i usually work with my twin brother g he's um he's uh more he has the language more than i do our language and uh so when i need something to be translated i i usually text him or if i'm with, with my dad i'll ask my dad or you know there's all kinds of different people I asked too, my Lala Wayne and, um, you know, there's a couple people that I passed down I was thinking of, but yeah, um, my uncle uh, Dekshi, Uncle Everett used to be one of them, but <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, you know, like I told G last night, I said, we need something, he wanted to, something to do with him, uh, keep walking, keep walking and for those that can't walk like that, so we, we uh, come up with uh, some words and, um, Actually, I just finished it today on the way over here, back back from the town we went to here is Watasco and back to the home here. My wife Mary went into the store and I was sitting in a van with my my babies and um, I I found these uh, these words and come across this text and I said, well, I, I better see what I can come up with. So I had these words on my phone that he translated and I started to put the tune in there and uh, I. Um, so I recorded that tune. I sent it to him. I actually made two versions of it. One version was a little bit longer, and then the second version was a little bit shorter. And I sent it to my brother G first. I want like he's kind of the one uh, I'll go to to get the approval of different things. And he said uh, the second one. That's all he said. I said okay. And then uh, so I sent it to the to the brother. And I'm not sure if he uh, seen it yet or whatever, but. Um, so that's how I usually songs go. Um, one real, one quick story too. Uh, we were out in, again, Black Hills Power. Man, all these experiences happen at Black Hills Power. <laughs> but anyway, we were uh, singing, we set up there, the veterans group came and they gave us tobacco, they gave us chandi to make a song for, um, 
they had this big, huge flag. It was uh, it was a, a flag that they uh, saved from the Twin Towers, the 9-11. Somehow the, those veterans got a hold of it. And uh, they came and they gave us tobacco. They asked us, can you make a song? This was Friday. And can you make a song by Sunday after Grand Entry? You guys can sing sing a song for this flag. So, okay. So at that time, uh, me and uh, Brother G, we had the late uh, Che uh, Frank makes room for them. He was singing with us at that time. And him and G, they came up with a whole bunch of words, real long, a whole bunch of words, a lot of words. And so well, we'll have time to work on it tonight, Friday night. So we went to the powwow. Did you come up with anything? And so Saturday, and he said, uh, he said, no, we're working at, at supper break or tonight. So oh, okay. And uh, just then the veterans came and they said, you gotta have that song? He said, no. Well, we need it by Grand Entry today in like half hour. <laughs> so we scrambled, we made, we made, we shortened those words up and we made it come up with the tune and we all put our input into that and we made uh we made the song it was it wasn't as long as it was uh originally but um but um uh it came out to be okay it was it was uh it came so when it was known as the 9 11 song yeah so that's, um, the, that's the song that we composed yep that for those of you who don't know the nine it's probably one of the most prettiest songs because it was the one song of Bad Nations that I knew and I taught elementary kids when they <laughs> threw me into teaching singing one year um, and that's so uncomfortable, but you know, we had to do it and and yep. those they made me proud and yeah, that's a beautiful song. So, yep. Yeah. And but, you know, but and just think course, it would have been a real long song <laughs> and it would have been probably um, tougher for those little guys to learn. So I think Tokashila yeah. made it that way to where it was just real simple for everybody to learn. And that's that's how I see it anyways, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it happened. For I think Mary, if you can speak on this too, for me, I couldn't teach, you know, because of protocols, mm -hmm. women cannot be around the drum and mm -hmm. I stick to those protocols and that etiquette. So for me, I'd um, get the boys in and they'd have their hand drums and I'd have to, I'd be like, okay, look at my hand and watch and hear the beat as I'm yeah. tapping it on the desk, you know, mm -hmm. and it all came together. It took so much work, but um, it was rewarding. Yeah. And then I'm sure for you guys yep, to it hear is. it, how does it make you feel when you hear the youth of, of <laughs> our, um, of our community singing that song. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, actually, that's how I got into my role at uh, the tribal school now um, was because Daryl, they hired Daryl in August to do the music part. So he started, uh, he actually started with the, doing the drum group with the young, uh, it's like, pre-k to fifth grade is what he teaches music and um so when he started he started with the boys and and everyone comes in so the boys you know they get to sit around the drum and the way we were taught was the same as tally was mentioning you know the the women sit the they sing on the outside and he always felt bad because the girls would ask to sit at the drum or, you know, they wanted to sing too. And they're like, why can't we, why can't we sing like that? Like, we want to do that too. And he always felt bad, he said. And so it was the beginning of October when I got hired. And that was my, my role, you know, to help and assist with the girls, you know, singing on the outside of the drum. And man, a lot of them just, they already had it, you know, but uh, being able to show them and be in that role for them where they can, where they see, you know, how women are supposed to uh, sing on the outside of the drum. And yeah, like you said, it's really, it's really rewarding. A lot of the girls just they're really awesome. They're doing really awesome. They know the song. They can sing it by themselves. And man, it makes me feel really good to see that. And they already really have a love for it. You know, there's a quite a few students in that we have that 
they want to spend, you know, all day in, in our classroom. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, can we sing, can we sing the flag song? Can we sing this, you know? And it makes me feel really good that they have that. It's yeah, really think, rewarding. Yeah, you know, and I just want to, uh, you know, it's for me and, and probably for Daryl and you, Mary, and, and everybody that signed on, you know, with this pandemic, it's taking our knowledge keepers and our culture bearers. So, yeah. you know, and um, I just want to say thank you guys for taking on that role. You know, you're a lot younger, probably younger than you would have expected to have to take on this responsibility. <laughs> and uh, yeah. That's why it's vital to have these shows that Racing Magpie um, has with their, their winter camp series. So this is documented and recorded, you know. So um, thanks again for Racing Magpie to offering these opportunities and, and being able to bring us all together. Peter's in Rapid yes. City, Racing Magpie's in Rapid City. These guys are, all the audience are from different places. I up here in Montana and you guys tell everybody where you guys are right now. <laughs> Yeah, we're up here in Alberta, Pigeon Lake, Alberta. Yeah, um, here for few more days. Yeah, so in the future, um, is there gonna be a, a Mary and Daryl album or compose love songs or <laughs> do you guys? <laughs> that that's kind of a joke. That'd be cool too. But do you guys think about that? You know, now your role is to to step in and be these culture bearers and, and knowledge keepers and to kind of preserve that because what you guys are doing is pretty awesome, you know? Yeah, you know, um, since we first got together, I think there's a few people who encouraged us and wanted to, us to hear or like make a CD or recording or something like that. But uh, we just haven't, <laughs> haven't really put much thought into it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's something we'll do in the future. The That'd kids be cool. could be the, the um, Tahash, your guys' kids could be the, the backup singers. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd, yeah be, that'd the, be cool. The boys in there, so that's, you know, and I'm sure you guys probably don't realize too that in our way in the art world, um, especially with indigenous artists that, you guys are also artists too, you know, you mm -hmm. have these tools with your voices and with your creativity. And it's not like the Western view, you know, it takes on this whole other meaning. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, thank you guys very much for, for being that for a lot of youth and even for people like me. Um, are you guys going to sing us some songs, maybe? Yeah, we had a couple songs that we were yeah. thinking about. I remember you mentioned that. So yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> audience, you're coming in for a, a nice treat. Um, I let Mary and Daryl know ahead of time that I would ask them to sing. So we'll probably just. Um, I know I was a little bit late, but we can go a little <laughs> bit. Is it okay if we go a little bit late? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sing us a couple songs, and then we'll kind of have a, a little bit of a chit chat. And if any of the audience, if you guys have any questions, just type them in, and I will ask Mary and Daryl after they give us some um, some good tunes. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll start off with um, a power song. It was uh, actually composed by. Uh, Mr. Joe Wood of the Northern Tree Singers. And uh, we came up with some uh, uh, words for, uh, we wanted him to make us a song. We had to actually, we asked a few few of the brothers to help us make some songs for our drum group because um, it was hard. It was hard for our drum group to gather, to get together because of the pandemic, because of um, just different things, man. It was hard for us to travel and, uh, it's, I thought, man, you know, we, I need some help. You know, let's let's ask some of the, bro, the brothers to, some of them are real good song composers, man. And Joel's one of them. Is, um, we asked him to uh, compose a song and, you know, put that good energy into that song, you know. And uh, so we gave him some words. And in that, uh, that uh, song, it's talking about, um, our, it's actually a drum song. And it talks about, uh, 
I, I am bad nation and uh, I come here to make everybody feel good and happy kind of along those lines there. Um, and so this is one that we sang, I think once or twice so far. So <clears throat> or two or two. Yeah. Okay, we'll do two, two verses here. And uh, <clears throat> you are your to recover do you guys have it in you to sing one more song yeah we can do one more yeah um so everybody loved it do it um while you guys are kind of taking a little break i just want to put out there for our audience too that um racing magpies winter camp series if um you ever want to re-show it again they have a youtube channel you can go back and definitely reference previous years and all the shows that we've had um I just want to talk about the again the importance of having shows like this and for spaces like racing mike pie um to be able to offer things like this that we can do you know um i had a family emergency for those of you that don't know i, I let some people know i had my grandmother bernice mcguire from um Rocky Boy Chippewa Cree tribe pass away this morning, um, real early in the morning. And, um, you know, I remember years ago when I was going through a really difficult time and um, Lexi Dwayne Hollowhorn Bear was like, and he talked about songs and how we have songs in our ways for every emotion and to find your song. And anytime you're going through hardships, that sing that song, and yep. Rashila will help you through it. Yes. So, you know, I would, I was on the phone, <coughs> finally got service. I was on the, let you guys know, I called, you know, Peter and been like, I want to be here for this show because I also want to put in there, you know, part of our language and our culture, we have a different philosophy and thought and it's not, you know, what it's not religious, it's spiritual and how these past few years with the pandemic and, and our elders passing away and those people who aren't didn't think they were ready had to be ready to step in yeah. Yeah. and you know that's what's awesome about these shows too and I this is important for our future and and, and you know going 
kind of back to our roots to renew our strength as indigenous mm -hmm. people so within you know when we leave we that material stuff doesn't matter it's yeah. ultimately what we have in us <clears throat> that takes forth now and we're here on Unchi Ka for a very short time and our yeah. ancestors that's what they wanted to teach us is exactly what a show like is tonight you know yes. like yep. bringing these songs in and the closer you are with Wakantaka and Tunkashila is better for you because then the ultimate life is the spirit world and we have songs that help our spirit take them up there too so i was like i gotta make this show and i gotta do it you know so thank you guys very much for being patient and the audience too and mary and daryl take us out with um uh wash day low uh -huh. <laughs> the next song we're gonna sing is uh, uh composed by um mary's uh cousin Marlon Deschamps and uh, him too. I gave him some words to make us a song. And, uh, um, so this one talks about, you know, it's a good day. Uh, bring your drum and uh, everybody have, have fun dancing kind of along those lines. So, <clears throat> okay, there we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> Wash day, wash day. <coughs> so um, we'll probably just wrap up here. If anybody has some questions to ask Mary and Daryl, you can sure put them in the chat there and I'll ask them for you. Um, or, you know, you guys want to put a plug in here for where the audience and, and fans can interact with you guys, your I, shout out to your social medias and drum groups and where you, are you guys <laughs> off to I just next? wanted to say, um, I've been kind of, checking facebook and i've seen trish with horn on there the whole time and i wanted to say hi trish and we so miss trish. you <laughs> she's been on there watching shout me. shout out to trish she's my biggest cheerleader my mom <laughs> i know i love yep. her she's so sweet that that energy i'm sure missing your energy tonight yeah. trish but you know this show and hearing the songs has been good and that's you know the spirit of songs our mm -hmm. our ways yep lift our people and help them through through the difficult yes. times. So um, you guys want to, Mary, where can we find you? Instagram, Facebook? Yes, I have Instagram and Facebook and Brown Zeff, Mary Brown Zeff here. <coughs> I have TikTok. I don't, I don't post on TikTok. I should, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, me neither. You can yeah. do your, um be, for those people who don't know, Mary is, a master beadwork artist and master ribbon 
sewer, I shouldn't say just ribbon skirts because you do other <laughs> things as well. Um, yeah. So she's pretty creative too. So definitely keep an eye out for her. You guys are both probably so busy now teaching our youth though, you know? Yes, it's fun. that's it's awesome. I really love it. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's become something I'm really passionate about now. I that's really good. love working there. That's good. Um, yeah, it's always awesome to, the kids just bring this hope and energy and yes. this resilience yep. because you think mm -hmm. back to the lie the home lives that our kids on the res and urban um areas too the they you know i'm just gonna say it because we all know it it's not the best life mm -hmm. and and you can see <clears throat> that it's just like almost an immediate connection once they start hearing the language and the songs yeah and, and you see you just see it through their faces how it mm -hmm. lightens them up and changes them and yeah so yeah that that's what's pretty cool and once yeah. again, thank you guys for doing that. Daryl, where can we find you at? And um, pretty much just uh, Facebook. And then I got TikTok too, but I don't really post on it either. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, yeah. everybody just, just gets sucked in by the reels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do. I wanted to say too about the, the children. It's um, especially where we come from, me and Telly, uh, Crow Creek, it's... Uh, there's not many singers that, that come from our reservation. I come up here to Alberta and even in Pine Ridge, Rosebud, Siston, there's lots of singers on those reservations. Mm -hmm. But back home in Crow Creek, there's, uh, it's kind of hard to find, you know, maybe just a handful of us. And, um, and working at the school now, there is... Uh, there's going to be some chats coming out of there, man. There's some good singers coming that are, they don't know their singers until this year. And, uh, they love it, man. They love that drum, that energy. They love the, the teachings. They remember the teaching, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asking, what are the rules around the drum again, boys? You know, and, and uh, they always tell me, you know, what they can remember. And it's pretty much everything I said, you know, and uh, it makes me proud because our, our home, Crow Creek School, is known for uh, basketball. And there's a lot of good basketball players that come from Crow Creek. And now I'm hoping, you know, we can get this, the singing thing going and there can be some, you know, some well-known singers coming from Crow Creek, which would be awesome. That would make me so proud, you know, to yeah. have some some champs from Crow Creek winning Gathering the Nations or, you know, all these yeah. big powers, you know, and it'd be something to be proud of, man. That's what I'm, that's my goal. That's what I want. I want to teach, you know, I want them to, to experience this life as a, as a singer, and I always tell them, I said, this 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 uh, life as a singer isn't for everybody, you know, because some some of you are going to be basketball players, football players, you're going to do other things, doctors, lawyers, but you know, to be a singer, it's uh, it brought me happiness, it brought me joy, it brought um, brought me to my wife, you know, and uh, that's how we met, and it, it's just a beautiful way of life to to be able to sing these songs. When it's uh, when we're having a bad day, just to hear a, a song, man, or to to sing a song in the car, and, and and there's times when I was learning a song, and it brought tears to my eyes. You know, I was heard about that. I was heard about ah, that song brought tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. I haven't experienced that until COVID, and I was learning this prayer song, and I I I, I can imagine all of our people that were in the hospital at that time they were about ready to leave this world and I, I, I can imagine them seeing saying these words and I just broke down crying while you know driving down the interstate going to our Sioux Falls there and I had to tell Mary what I was feeling you know but like there's stuff like that where we can release release what we're feeling you know and it makes mm -hmm. us feel so so good it's hard to explain that feeling around that drum when we're singing you know singing a, a good song or even in the sweat lodge you know, it's it's hard to to tell that in words to express that. You have to experience that. And as a singer, you know, some of our our, our kids now, I hope they get to experience that feeling around that drum or in that sweat lodge at the sun nets. You know, because you can't really say you can, but it's it doesn't do it justice to you know to say it in words. You have to experience it, and mm -hmm. that's one thing our, our community back home it was lacking. You know, I mean, then nobody experienced that until. You know, tell me and my brother, you know, Lala Wayne brought his boys up and 
you know, there's other singers like that. And so I'm hoping, you know, now, now that, I mean, there's some good backup singers as well. Some good girls that, man, they, they, they're really, when, when Mary can't be in the class and, and uh, she's not there, and then I tell them, I said, just keep doing what Mary showed you. And then, so there's a part there at the end of this one song, we'll stop, us boys will stop singing in the middle and Mary and those girls was, would, would finish the song off at the end there. And one, one time they weren't there and I said, you guys, your girls going to have to do that. So I didn't think they would. And here we stopped and, and they kept going, those girls, and they finished off the song. Oh man, I brought, I brought a, a, a wicked feeling, man. So I told Mary, and they were all proud too. Daryl, can you tell Mary that we, we sang without her? I said, yeah, I will, I will, I'll tell her. <laughs> so it, it's, it's awesome, man. So I, 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 I'm glad we're at, where me and Mary are where we're at right now because you know, I, I want them to experience that. I want them to be happy. Just like how those basketball players are happy when they win that state championship mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, there, there's feelings too in our way of life, you know, that, that we can, we can feel that too as singers. So mm -hmm. I wanted to share that. So yeah, definitely. I have a, um, Trisha said you two make the best teachers too. So kind hearted <laughs> and gentle to others. You guys are and hugs kiddos for she said That's hug cool. those kiddos for all of us you know yep. from oh from yes. and Trisha the too. give them big hugs but i have a quick story to tell yeah. about that you know to go back to the 9 11 song when i oh, yeah. that one year i taught elementary school <laughs> and, yeah. and um boy you know they were just i was just like the little ones and i was getting frustrated with myself about this song but um so the the day that um sunny red bear passed away um i went to school that morning and you know the back in crow creek and a lot of tribal schools do this too i think to introduce song into the the kids because they don't have a lot of them don't have it at home you know we know that yep. being teachers in our communities but um and other teachers but they um wouldn't get that song and so i had to go to work and oh it was just a terrible day for me emotionally drained you know that it was so close to him but um so th those schools that each school takes a turn each week so elementary school middle school high school and this that morning it was my group the, the elementary kids and i was like okay and um we went up to sing the flag song and i thought we were gonna sing the traditional flag song and that's the one day they got it together and they sang the 9-11 song and it made me no, cry. Nice. I, couldn't, I couldn't hold it together and they were just looking yep. at me up there. But <laughs> yep. that's the power of, of song. Yep. And, you know, um, you talked about the lyrics of the 9-11 song too. And for mm -hmm. some reason, those little guys knew that that would mean something that day, you know, and yeah. they just... The, the yep. power of our language people when you know our yep. language even if you know some of our language but you know that's how the kids learn is through song learn our yep. language yep. through song goes together yeah yep. language and songs yep. yep yeah 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 and you get you know once again thank you guys so much for for doing this yep. and presenting this and being you know really this is going to be documented in when you guys are elders, you would be, you know, your grandkids would probably look at this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> go, go find us on YouTube on Racing Mayflies yeah. Winter Camp, uh, page, <laughs> you know. So that yeah. that's cool. Then it's yeah. awesome to to me just being a relative of yours to to see you guys attain that. For those who don't know, um, twins run in our family as well. <laughs> Daryl and Daryl's mom is a twin. Yeah. They're twins. Yeah. Um, my yeah. Tiff and I, and then we have Sharon and Karen. So, yep. I re yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Check pause. But um, once again, thank you guys so much, mm. Pidama Yapi, from all of us. Um, so yeah, everybody, the show is done. Thank you all for signing yeah. in. Stay tuned to Racing and Magpies. Um site there i'm they're so patient with me i get everything in last minute i have so much going on but be patient <laughs> we have upcoming shows still coming the winter camp series um goes till march and also racing magpie has a lot of events going on then in their space too they have an artist market that's coming up valentine's weekend so if the weather's good um daryl my mom said yeah. tell auntie pauline she said hello yeah. to grandma yeah. hello I from that. us I will. Too. Yeah, haven't been home sure for a will. while. I should have had G on. Maybe I'll reach out to him and get him. Yeah. 
to show. present too, maybe do next it. month. Yep. So yeah. let him yep. know that I'll be in touch too. So yep. thank you guys all so much. Um, yeah, Peter, it was, I'll probably it was stay fun. on for it a little bit. What's up, Mary? Yeah, I was just going to say it was fun. Thank yep. you for having us. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Don't be nervous. I was the one who was kind of nervous because I was. <laughs> so, it was one, one, one awesome. Yeah, it one. took a lot to get on on tonight, so <laughs> I'm glad I made it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Um, I'll probably I'm gonna be emailing.